During his 32 years at the aluminum giant Alcan Incorporated, Michael Bell held several senior financial positions, and he now brings his vast experience down to a personal level as the founder and president of Managing God's Money, a ministry dedicated to teaching principles from the Bible that give us a proper perspective on money in our often out of balance lives. Michael, welcome to Full Circle. Thank you. It's Good to great have to be you. on the couch. I don't know if it's great to have you on the couch, <laughs> to be honest. I'm kind of already oh. feeling that. I mean, not, not in a bad way, but Michael you know. Michael is probably the most uh, convicting guest Absolutely. ever. <laughs> but the last time you were on Full Circle, there were some fireworks here because you were really bringing it right down to oh, home yeah. for a lot okay, of Okay, I'm not going to talk about the shoes then. <laughs> Oh no, we will later. We will later because we need we need your advice. Yes. We need your wisdom. But I need to ask you, why do you feel so compelled to spend now your life just speaking into this? You know, when my son was going to CJEP in Montreal, which is between high school and university, they started to talk about giving them credit cards. And he was very young. And I thought, no way. So I came up with this thing called a capital fund as a credit card alternative. And what bothers me is that the world says that you need to get a credit card, get into debt, so you get a credit rating. And I'm thinking, how about have a history <laughs> of saving so you can be reliable? Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. And what is really pulling me now is when I look at the state of finances in the Canadian economy, we're on the precipice. Our debt is critical. It's, 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 you know, I, people are coming, well, paranoid, suicidal. It's really a huge deal. So I, God gave me this passion about 12 years ago. I'm not sure why, but <laughs> I'm fo I focused initially on my children. My first book was for my children. My most recent book is for my kids at the age that they are, 35 to, to 40. And, and that's pretty much what it is. But I, I have a passion to try to see how I can work into the lives of Canadians to be debt free. I think people will be um, surprised to hear you say that, that the Canadian economy is doing so well because we've kind of like been uh, taking pride all the way through the recession. When we look at you know the state of American finances, oh wow, we've had bank rules in place and we haven't done the same thing with the real estate market and we're, we're one of the strongest uh, economies in the G8. So explain why you're saying that we're in trouble. Personal household finances, we're the only country in the developed world that borrowed our way during the recession. So we kept spending, so the economy kept growing mm -hmm. or didn't shrink as much as it did. In fairness though, the, our banking system is very solid. There are much more regulations about it. So if we look at personal household financing, we, we have 150, for every $150 we owe, we earn 100. Wow. In the wow. States, for every $147 they earn, they earn 100. So we, on a personal financial level, we are critical. We are absolutely critical. Now, Michael, I wonder if the, that sort of critical state is about, we've always thought about managing our money. And this is interesting. I, this is something I've just learned. You said no one can manage money. You can manage your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, that kind of changes things. Because I always thought, you know, you take the money, it's tangible, and you manage it, and you say, I spend with, it, with this or not. But you're saying it's nothing about that. It's actually my own personal lifestyle choices that have either gotten me in trouble mm -hmm. or have actually helped to, to make a, a life of freedom and savings. Talk about that, because I've never really heard that idea yes. before. Yes, and what makes it so bad, you see, is that the world says to you, think about financing, no money down, $120 a month, etc. as opposed to say, do I need this? Can I afford yeah. it? There is no such thing as affordability. So wh what we do is we look, as people, we look at the money and they say, you can buy this car because it's $125 a month, but you can't afford the car because mm -hmm. the car is $20,000 over a period. So buying a car is a lifestyle choice as opposed to a financial engineering choice. Right. Financial mm -hmm. engineering is $125 for five years. So what happened then? Because I was looking at the statistics of personal debt, yep. Canadians' personal debt load. And the statistic in 1982 was, it was almost half as much as it is today. Mm -hmm. So in a period of 30 years, something has totally changed because our debt loads have gone, why? Because of the way the merchants market to us. 30 years ago, you had a car that you buy. It was $20,000, $25,000. 
and you'd look and you'd say, oh, that's $25,000, and then you would get a loan for $25,000. Today, the same car, the merchants understood that you can't afford to buy. You can't, so they've made a conscious choice that we can't afford our lifestyle. So they create the image that you can afford it. So they say it's $175 a month, no money down, and you say, good. So the concept of affordability went because you don't realize that having paid $175 a month, you've actually bought the car, committed to $20,000. But you don't see that because you don't read the contract. But Michael, I want it though. I know. <laughs> this is the thing I'm trying to understand because you're saying it's not affordable, but I want it. Yeah. You know? You want it. I want those shoes. I want that <laughs> coat. I want that thing on sale. Yes. And I think that maybe it's the core. And you know, to be honest, maybe that's the core of me where it's like I want these shiny things. I want to look this way and I can't afford it. So I justify. We justify. Mm -hmm. we justify, and you see what we do is because society constantly tells us that you need more. It's a more society, you need more. You need a better phone, you need a better car, you need a better house. And you see the thing is we don't realize that we cannot afford our neighbor's standard of living. As soon as we get caught up with the neighbor, she re refinances, renegotiates, and we oh, I gotta go again. Mm -hmm. And we try to do that. But the key is if we truly, as Christians, if we honestly believe God owns everything, if we honestly believe God owns everything and we are his managers, and therefore we start with nothing, mm -hmm. so we start with God having 100%, and our goal is to say, God, how can I use a portion of your 100% for me? then that's different. And we have forgotten Matthew 6, 24 to 34, six times, six times Jesus says, don't worry. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about and this is our biggest. <laughs> yeah. This is the biggest fueler of worry and anxiety in Absolutely. our society. And he says, don't worry. He says, I tell you, look at the birds. I tell you, he says, I tell you, stop worrying. And we worry. So when the car breaks down, we say, no, no, that's, God won't look after my car, no, I need to go to the bank. As opposed to saying, okay, Lord, the car is broken down, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. And he's saying, get your PhD. Each Christian needs a PhD. <laughs> Patience, humility, and dependence on God. Mm -hmm. If we take that PhD and say, okay, got to be patient and humble. So mm -hmm. I go to my neighbor and say, may I um, get a ride with you to the supermarket? <laughs> Mm. And neighbor says, yeah. well, you got to wait on me. Oops, a little, you know, more, hum yeah. more humility. Wow. That's what I we need to I think that's so good. And I think you're really hitting at the root of it because um, there's mm -hmm. de definitely are people who just spend because they like to spend. But a lot of us, you know, and I, and I think I put myself more in that category. Not that I've never bought anything on impulse, but overall, it's I'm a practical person. So I think my car's broken. I need my car repaired because I need to go to work. Mm -hmm. So I need to fix my car. And if I don't have mm -hmm. the money, I still do it because it's practical to fix my car. You know, it's not like I'm spending money on like a, a Disney mug that I don't need and doesn't do anything for my life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, or I need to buy this shirt because I need to wear it on air because my job is, you know, a television personality, whatever, whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so I'm making practical choices, but you you say the way to do that instead is a cap with capital fund, right? No, but I'm saying the most practical choice is to listen to Jesus and don't worry. You see, your car breaks down Sunday night, you have to go to work on Monday. And therefore you say, I'm gonna put the charge on my credit card. And I'm saying, Jesus says, don't worry, go to him. Remember now, you're gonna have to wait until maybe two minutes before. It's oh, hard, yeah. it's hard. Because it sounds inconvenient. But he didn't say, it's, I, I didn't read anywhere where it spoke about convenience. Yeah. <laughs> it says, depend on me, trust me. <laughs> He says the whole idea of ownership too. That's a, that's also wow. countercultural. That yes. we are, so it re, it involves us giving up control mm -hmm. over saying I I can get this, I can do this, I'll buy this. You know, we feel like we have some sort of power in our lives, don't we? Which we really don't. We do. yeah, <laughs> right. But we do, and it, it, it's it, you know, in practical terms, Cheryl, as you say, in practical terms, it's better to say my car broke down. On Saturday, I have to go to work on Monday. Therefore, as a responsible citizen, I should go borrow. But if you look throughout the Bible, in every instance when God wanted something done, every time he called somebody and he gave them what they wanted and it was done. So the question is, Lord, I think you want me to go to work. Yeah. 
<laughs> and I think he does. But the question is, he also wants to test our faith. Mm -hmm. So he's going to say, Cheryl, how long are you going to wait before you give up on me and choose the bank? Mm -hmm. And that's really the issue. You know, yeah. I always say, my, one of my favorite things is you never get a miracle until you need a miracle. Absolutely. Like miracles don't happen when you, you, you depend on yourself or you make things happen or you go to the bank. Mm -hmm. It's so true. But when you're in a situation where you have no other option mm -hmm. and you can only go to God, mm -hmm. that's when we do it. That's but, right. And, right. But I think that too, is that's living countercultural. Like I, if you actually really look at this, what you're asking, you're saying wait, save, buy something that's affordable, manage your lifestyle, you know, and your choices. Um, Target, target saving, which Cheryl was mentioning about the capital fund. These are all things that around us in media and advertising and marketing, they don't, they don't support that. No. They support no. better, bigger, shinier now um, deals spent. And they're very smart about it too. They are totally smart I about mean, it. you know, yeah. like shoes, for instance. We were talking earlier <laughs> yeah. how um, I got a new pair of shoes. And okay. they're very nice, by thank the way. Thank you. Anne. And I'm wearing them today. <laughs> thank you, thank and, you. And, and buy one, get one. A half price. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, at, I'm at the outlet mall, okay? And the outlet mall, big sign, buy one, get the second pair, half price. And I think, <gasps> Well, already, the first <laughs> pair is already a really good price because it's the outlet <laughs> mall. And then you get the second pair at half price. Now, I only went we in for one pair of shoes. Yes. I only needed one pair of shoes. Yes. And I did need the pair of shoes. Of course, one. <laughs> one. <laughs> but the second pair, I could get at half price, Michael, just because oh, I bought that first pair. I'm sorry. But so, 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 <laughs> I'm not to say that you got sucked in, but we did. We, we did. Do. I know. So we did. So how do you it's stop, how do you stop yourself from getting sucked into that What then? you need to do is to understand what a budget is. And most, if people People understood what a budget, a budget is to free you, a budget is not to constrain you. A budget you. sounds too much like a diet. You know, <laughs> it works. It does. It's, there's a huge okay. connection it's there. Painful. Actually, I don't really refer to it as a budget, I call it a spending plan. Which ah, sounds a lot good. better. A spending yeah. plan is to relieve it. So you know what? You want to do a spending plan? Put five pair of shoes in there. Put six coats. Put seven hats. But at the end of the day, you have an income and you have the spending. And what you want to do with the budget to say, before, do I have enough funds from my income to achieve the spending I'd like? Mm -hmm. And then before, you can make your choices. You know what? I might go to that outlet mall and see that shows, buy one, get two at half price. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to budget for it. And because you know what? These things are predictable. They're right. predictable. So I'm saying if we truly understand what a budget is, work with a budget, you will find that you can and you will cope with the merchant. You will. But we don't like to think ahead like that. Like, you know, there's impulse buying, there's yeah. how we feel emotionally. There's clearance there's racks. There's clearance racks. Oh, the clearance there's racks. outlet malls. But I mean, because what yeah. you're saying is that you're really having to be very intentional and work through in very practical ways your life, your yes. lifestyle. But you know, the more practical thing is to think about this. If you think about the amount of money people spend on their credit cards for interest, Mm -hmm. And if you didn't spend those funds, you'd have more spend more funds to buy more shoes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and this true. is really this That's is true. really like and it, and it is kind of there's a there's a biblical side of this in that, you know, we have laws that we live by and and morals and guidelines, but it's not to make us it's not to create, you know, restrictions. It's to free us. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. you're saying there's the same thing with the budget that yes. this is mm -hmm. this yes. is something that will ultimately make you happier, healthier person. Absolutely. Look at Genesis 41. Genesis 41, Joseph. There's going to be feasts and there's going to be famine. And that's really what the capital fund. Mm. That's what the what I'm. I like the idea of the capital yeah, fund. Explain, yeah, yeah, explain that's that good. a little bit. The, the capital fund is what I call targeted savings. The car is going to break down, and the car needs to be replaced. The fridge is going to break down. The fridge is going to need to be replaced. You're going to have education for your children. All I'm saying is, in advance, you sit back and you say, okay, the car is going to be needing major repairs in five years, probably two thousand dollars. Okay, five divided by two thousand four hundred divided by twelve, okay. about thirty-six dollars a month, and just set that aside every month. Just set it aside every mm -hmm. month. And you can even work with your bank, can't you? And you have can. the bank automatically yes. withdraw yes. that yes. from your account into yes. a savings account. Yes, yes. And so, what a capital fund then is is that that really what you would normally use your credit cards for? I call it the credit card alternative. Because what you've done, you, you, you want to be able to buy the car for cash, you want to be able to buy the fridge, the stove, the washing machine. But the key is it's targeted savings. It's not savings. You're not saving. You're targeting the savings to specific 
future buys. You can do it, you mm. can do it, you can do it, <laughs> and you can even target it for four pairs of shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, Target saving. Works for me. No, not really. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, yeah. It, yeah. Not really. Yeah. It's target to save. And I, yeah. I guarantee, if folks do this, you will see all of that interest that you're spending won't be spent. So you can actually spend more. But at the end of the day, we really want to earn to give. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. all God's. Yeah. Yeah. And when we recognize it's His, and when we focus this way, we are able to live like this. And now, we say, God, it's yours. Michael, you are so full of so many good practical tips. And when we were talking in the makeup room earlier, you told us something that totally blew our minds, and it had to do with credit cards. And so when we come back, I'm going to ask you, Michael, mm -hmm. to share with uh, all of us why you only always use a credit card yep. and not cash. Okay. Very interesting. You're gonna, that's coming up when we come back right after this. And we're back with financial expert Michael Bell. Okay, Michael, you've got to tell us all why, as a financial expert, you say you only ever use credit cards. Because my credit card is cash, it's a check. I have an arrangement with my bank that at the end of the month, the 20th of the month, they send the bill to my bank and the bank pays it in full. So before I make a credit card charge, the money has to be there because mm -hmm. it's paid yeah. automatically. But I also work with a budget. So I'm not spending because I have the cash. I'm spending because I need it and I know the funds are there. I never spend before going through what I call quickly the plane. Is it planned? Will it increase my loan? Is there an alternative? Is it necessary? And is this the best and most effective way of the f spending right now? But all of my, I'm not spending the credit card to get points. I'm spending it because it's greater control. I record every penny. I spent. Wow. I can tell you every dime I've spent since 30 years ago. Oh my, wow. oh my goodness. Wait, but it's simple. That's a discipline. Yeah. No, but it's and simple. And did your lessons trans translate to your children? Are they living according to what you mm -hmm. taught them? I taught them and I don't try to follow up. <laughs> no, no, really? That's what you no, do. No, Given no. You, you, you raise my, them and then you set yes, them free. Yes, and you I trust that they're going to do okay yeah, on their yeah, own. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, Michael Bell, good. thank you for being with us again, Managing God's Money. You can find out all about Michael on our website at fullcircletv.com. Thank you for being with us. And remember, always keep your eyes on Jesus. It's all about Him.